Ashley, thank you so much for um, being a guest uh, in the life of, of a social media manager podcast. How are you? How, how is your day? I've been doing great. Thank you so much for asking. I'm so excited to be here. Um, my day is just getting started, but this is a great way to kick it off. So excited to chat. Yeah, I hope so. So before to jumping and find out uh, your uh, life story and uh, what you're doing now. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So uh, my name is Ashley DeFranza. Um, I work and live in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I grew up just about 30 minutes outside the city. So I'm a Massachusetts person born and raised. Um, went to college in Connecticut, where I studied um, print journalism and theater. So um, I've kind of combined the creativity of theater and the writing of print journalism and found marketing for a career. Um, but I also do a ton of theater in my personal time. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm heavily involved in Boston theater um, as a director and a performer. So that's kind of my side passion. Um, and yeah, I spend a lot of my free time doing that. Okay. So we did uh, last year, we did um, a research uh, where we wanted to find out the past, the past of the social media manager, what they study, what they do, what, what they uh, um, prefer to do in their spare time. So it seems that um, most of the people are creative. They do something like uh, you did in college or in high school. Um, they do stuff like this, creative stuff, um, filming, art, working, creative, everything. Uh, connected to work uh, to the creative side so i think it's uh, somehow correlated with uh, the job and the skills that you need to have for this uh, for for this job role i guess absolutely i definitely agree and like there's so many crossovers specifically with theater like it's all about understanding your audience and what's going to evoke emotion and what people are going to relate to and creating an experience that they want to keep coming back for so i find a lot of parallels especially between directing and um social media management yeah yeah at some point they are connected in some in in, in some ways exactly. so you are now working as a social media and content manager for central insurance can you describe a little bit this job role yeah absolutely so um i've been at central for about a year now um and in this job role i basically run the um, central blog um, which is a um, like a WordPress blog in which we post a lot of content, um, adding value to our policyholders and our agents. Um, and we spend a lot of time optimizing that for SEO and trying to make sure that our articles rank on Google, but also balancing that with that value add and making sure that we're actually providing content that helps our audiences. Um, and at the same time, I run the social strategy for Central across our channels. So we have an Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, um, we're toying around with like a Pinterest. So there's, there's a bunch of different um, channels that I manage. I work on everything from concepting and like strategy at a really high level to copywriting. Um, I do have a designer that I partner with to help like actually create graphics and things like that. And our creative director is wonderful and highly involved in like helping um, kind of direct any potential videos or anything like that, that gets a little more um, in the weeds media wise. Um, but at a high level, it's all coming from the same place. And it's, it's a wonderful, like multifaceted role um, that really allows me to be both strategic and creative. So I really love it. Mm -hmm. And if you have to, I don't know, uh, tell us some percentage, are, are you more creative or more analytical? Oh my goodness. That's a hard one. I've actually, I think it's shifted in, in over the course of my career. I, I started as a content creator, so I would have said fully creative. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm fully analytical. I think I'm like that weird one that like toes the line right in the middle and depending okay. on the day, one to the other. On depending yeah. on the task that you have to, to do. Yes, exactly. And even with my strategy, I tend to approach it from a creative angle. So like, I, I think if it had to lean one way, it would probably be creative, but I do really love looking at trends and, and trying to understand um, just the metrics and things, how our, how our content's doing. Cause like that feeds the whole cycle. So a little bit of both. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Because when I, because you have the responsibility to manage the content for, for your blog and also be involved in the content in the social media. Uh, I think it's uh, quite interesting to see the 
um, how people engage with your content once you put it on a blog and what the, um, how they are reacted to your post uh, that you have on your blog. So I think it's interesting to to have this the whole journey for example the people came to our website uh, saw something on your blog uh, they consider that it's worth uh, worthful worthy and they want to share it on on social media so you have the full journey uh, and most of the social media manager i don't know they have only the part of what's happening on social and uh, they don't know what to do or they are responsible to sync with the content team and to deliver the the numbers the shares number the comments and so on to to the content team so yeah. and in, at some point uh, i might say uh, it's an easier job for you but uh, uh, <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's uh, not uh, the right way to to, to say this well i'm very lucky in that if i you know see for example like a holiday coming up or even one of those silly ones like national taco day or something i have the opportunity to write a piece of content or help um, lead one of our writers to write, write a piece of content that helps support that campaign on social so in that way there's definitely that through line and i'm very lucky to have kind of a voice in both camps um but you're right that that um it, it does lead to definitely more tasks day to day as well yeah 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 can you describe the steps you follow for creating a strategy on social? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it, I really follow the same kind of steps, whether it's like a big brand, like my current role at Central, or I also have like a freelance agency that I work on on the side um, of my own that I do tiny projects for performing arts companies in Boston, things like that. Um, and no matter what client I'm working with, no matter what the size, I start with like really basic questions like, what are you trying to do with social? And a lot, especially for the smaller organizations, they have to think about that. They're just like, oh, I mm -hmm. know that I need it, but like, I don't know what I'm trying to do. So walking through that conversation, understanding what their goals are, are they trying to grow their audience? Are they trying to up engagement? Um, asking what differs from their social strategy or what they hope to differ from their social strategy in comparison to their email strategy or mm -hmm. their in-person strategy, things like that. Like how does social want to stand on its own? And then once I've done that kind of social intake kind of conversation and understand what their goals are, I do a huge audit of anything that exists for them already, um, of their competitors and of their audiences. Those are kind of the three pillars that I that I dive into. Um, I really want to make sure before I set a strategy that I get an understanding of who we're talking to, who else is in the space, who what people are doing right, what people maybe are have misses on, um, and how we can fill in those gaps. Really kind of establishing that piece of it. And then I layer that across like what the brand voices, what the brand's goals are at a high level. And I kind of find the places where those meet in the matrix and I fill out um, just a social strategy based on that information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's important every time, every social media manager, uh, if they have to do a strategy, they have to look at their marketing in general, uh, they have to look at their niche to understand the competitors and to understand uh, where is the audience. And before jumping to a new platform or jumping to create content for a specific platform, make sure that you understand the audience that you have and uh, they're interested and so on. How do you measure success in social these days? Oh, gosh, what a big question. <laughs> um, for our team, um, especially at Central, we kind of have a motto that for us, it's all about like shares and engagement. Um, so for our company specifically, we're looking at how far can our piece of content go? Because we're just really looking to add value. We're not at Central specifically in the business of lead gen. Like we're really just trying to assist and nurture and provide um, useful information. So for us, it's all about getting a piece of content out there that is shareable, that people engage with, that people resonate with, and that has the potential to go far. So um, for me, it's it's really those metrics that I that I watch. Um, click throughs at a high level are also really, really important. Seeing um, it's one thing for people to like a post, it's another for them to be so enticed by it that they click through mm -hmm. to whatever you're pushing them towards. Um, and then obviously, high level engagement metrics like likes and comments and, mm -hmm. and reactions. And things like that are all also great just to just to keep the community engaged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do you combine because how do you combine content with graphic for example uh 
how do you know that people are sharing your post based on uh, on the copy or uh, it's based on what you have in, in your graphics? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we really try to make sure that our graphics and our copy kind of go hand in hand, that they work together, that one feeds the other. So our graphics, our process for writing like content for that will become a graphic is that we write the copy first, make sure that's the value add, and then we hand it off to the designer to kind of turn into something that's visually appealing as well. So it really is built from the ground up to be a combo piece. Um, so I don't know that I don't know that we would be able to tell what of those two things is, is grasping them. But as long as they're being grasped, our goal is is met. And um, I think if we see things like saves, for example, on Instagram or mm -hmm. Facebook, if someone's saving something, there's a mm -hmm. good chance that they're resonating with the content and they're going to want to come back to it. Um, if it's something that's just fun or silly and they're sharing it, like maybe that's more about the visuals. But most times I, I do really think it's a combination of the two. Yeah, yeah. And because I saw that, I don't know, there are posts that have uh, one sentence um, and they go viral and they have po and there are posts with, I don't know, it's a piece of article there on Instagram or on LinkedIn and they, got the, they have a lot of shares. So I was interested to find out if you have something in some insights uh, regarding this, uh, the, the share insights, uh, what yeah. people and how people in sh and why people are sharing your posts. I think it's, it's also about making sure you're creating content for each channel really specifically and intentionally. Like the thing you post on Instagram is not going to be the same thing you post on LinkedIn because LinkedIn, both their algorithms and just a knowledge of their audience tells us that they like a longer um, description. They like a longer post copy. They want to read and feel like they're in conversations rather than just like being sold things via images. Right. But on Instagram, it's all really image heavy. So things have to be translated to those graphics. So I think it's really about knowing what's going to be the most successful where and adjusting for that. Yeah. And this is, I think it's driven by the platform. So if we are talking about, I don't know, TikTok, you know that you have to create TikToks and so on. Or Instagram, you know that uh, the graphics are, are are really important. What's the most challenging thing you have to do for your job? Yes, another or, very or, <laughs> or you did in the past. <laughs> yeah, I think just moving at a speed that um, keeps up with like the general attention span of the world. Like we we move through social. Social has like such a mm -hmm. short shelf life that like as soon as you spend a lot of time making a wonderful post that you know people are going to love, like, that's awesome. It's live. People are loving it. But you're already like three posts back, like making sure the next ones are ready to go. Um, so it never stops. It's a constant cycle. And I think that can be draining in some regards. Um, it You have to find ways to stay like inspired and, and stay um, really engaged with with the, the content. It's really easy to just say like, okay, it went live. Like what's on the, what's the next one. But I think remembering to follow that journey through seeing how the post does, seeing how people resonate and using that to adjust future strategy and things like that without losing sight of that big picture. It can be challenging, but it's super important. So I think overall that's, that's the main goal. Mm -hmm. Do you have, I don't know, something specific tools or newsletter that you are looking at and getting the changes from social media? like the changes in trends and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of different tools that we kind of use. Well, first and foremost, just a, a shameless plug that we use Amplify as our social media management tool. And we love it. Um, and they're really great about keeping you up to date about things that are shifting in the larger space. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I also follow just a lot of really great accounts, especially even ones like natively Instagram's Instagram, <laughs> Instagram's uh, Facebook, Facebook's Facebook, things like that, that are constantly mm -hmm. rolling out. Mm -hmm. um, press releases and newsletters when things are shifting. And I think staying on top of that stuff is, is super important and really hard to do. Like I said, when you're building the plane while you fly it, um, but really, really important to stay on top of. And then it helps when you go to conferences like social media marketing world and really meet people who have like the ear to the ground and are, are able to predict those ch trends before they even happen. Yeah. 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 That's uh, yeah. Conference is a, a good way to learning and discovering what's happening uh, in social media and what's trending. What's a failure for this job role? How how would you define a failure? Yeah, I think a failure would 
just be kind of operating in a silo. That that's kind of what I what I'm thinking. Um, if you don't take the time as a social media manager to get to know the different facets of your organization, get to know what matters to them, get to know what they're working really hard on, so you can help support that. Because a social media manager is it's like a it's like a megaphone for all the different campaigns and work that everybody at the company is doing. So it's really important that you remember that, yes, I have my goals and yes, this is what I'm doing with my strategy and really remember to open that conversation up and make sure that you're supporting everybody and at least understanding what they're working toward um, and being a voice for them. I think failure comes when we forget that we're all part of the same kind of team and have that, those same high level goals. Yeah. And make sure that, I don't know, make sure that you are no, you are not working alone so everything what you're doing on social have an impact or on other teams. So I don't know, the comm teams, the PR team, the development team, everything it's uh, connecting in a, in a way. So make sure that everyone, uh, every team is uh, on the same page and they know that you are running a campaign, or even if you are running a campaign with influencer or, or just on your own channels, make sure that you communicate with your team and every everyone is uh, is sync what will make your job easier yeah i think um many social media managers can relate to the fact that having like a full social media team would make anybody's job easier i think um that's a future state for a lot of companies um that are still i mean we've come so far in defining our role in the larger space like 10 years ago social media manager wasn't really a thing um so it's kind of cool to see how far we've come but i think in time there will be full social media teams like as a regular occurrence at organizations um and i'm excited for that world i think that would make just the work that we do um maybe move a little more smoothly move a little more impactfully like the, the designer, the creative director on my team are wonderful, incredible, and they give me every second of their time that they have to dedicate to social, which I so appreciate. But I also know that they have other priorities and they have other things that they need to focus on too. And I'm try to be really respectful of that. Um, but at the same time, would it be wonderful to have a designer and a video editor and all these people mm -hmm. right, right at my disposal at all times so we could be really agile and fill in mm -hmm. trends as they come and things like that? Yes, that would be amazing. So um, I think that's hopefully where the world is going um, for all the social media managers out there who feel like they're uh, a one man band. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. It'll take some time. Yeah. Because uh, right now the, these roles, okay. You can use a tool to create something. You can use, um, you can uh, use some slot that you have uh, to the designer team or to the video, to the video team. But as you said, they have uh, other priorities in, uh, in that day and they know they sh they they have to uh, prioritize they have to make sure that um keep their agenda so um, yeah it's important to have different persons in your team and to make sure that everyone can work and they can work for you in this case for uh, for social media how do you find inspiration for social media every day? Oh gosh, yeah. I feel like once I turned on my brain to look for social media inspiration, it was truly everywhere. I think there's so many brands and so many single influencers and so many um, agencies doing such incredible work all the time that there's like no shortage of, of influence and excitement out there. Um, I have folders on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my Pinterest, anything I see at any time that inspires me. I'm like, oh, I love that the way that that, you know, color looks with that color or like, oh my gosh, like that type is so cool. Or, oh, I love how they positioned that product. Like anything that just really stands out to me, I save. And that's something I really learned from um, my boss, who's really, really all about um, drawing inspiration and, and tracking inspiration and sharing inspiration. Um, because we learn, I think, from just observing and being really mm -hmm. intentional about that and actually writing down why I liked something. So it's not just a screenshot that's in my phone and I go back to it being like, why did I save this? But something that I have and I'm like, oh, you loved this about this um, has been so helpful. And just, it just gets the mind moving. I mean, even if you're not acknowledging in a moment, you don't go to make a post and say, what did I see that I liked? Like it's, it's in your head and it's, it's 
um, it's been cooking in there. So it, it comes out um, in various ways when you actually go to create something new. Yeah, so I think I have the same better. I have a lot of screenshots on my phone and usually I take some notes or directly on, the, on that screenshot to make sure that, I don't know, later on when I'm scrolling my uh, photos and see that screenshot to, to understand that, okay, I can use this for uh, this type of story or to create this type of post uh, uh, for, uh, for our channel. So um, as you said, I think every social media manager have specific folders in different ways, desktop, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, and so on, to make sure that uh, everything that you saw over over the internet, uh, you can put it in a specific bucket and you can use it when, I don't know, you have a creative blocker or something like that. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing this uh, information and insights with us. I have a fire up session with you, so you have to choose one word um, and uh, no explanations, just to <laughs> just uh, one word uh, for, from uh, uh, from this. Okay. So, online or offline? Online. Mm -hmm. Reels or carousels? Carousels. YouTube or TikTok? TikTok. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. because um, carousels and TikToks and online, all of these are saying something uh, about what you prefer and what you like to do uh, and the type of content you like to see. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, being uh, uh, a guest in this podcast and sharing the struggles and the way you are doing a strategy on social and what is challenging for you, uh, where people can find you. Yes. Um, I have a website for my agency. Um, it's riptidemarketing.com, riptide-marketing.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Ashley DeFranza, um, Instagram, Ashley underscore DeFranza. Find me anywhere, everywhere. I love answering questions like this. I love chats about social media and I love mentoring people and kind of helping people on their journey. So if anybody has any questions or wants to continue the conversation, I'm more than available. I'd love to. That's great. That's great. All the thing, all the links that you said will be, uh, can be found in the um, description in Spotify, wherever everyone is listening to this podcast episode. So thank you so much and thank you and have a great day. Awesome. Thanks, Adina. Thanks for having me.